secularists, they say, well, religion should not intrude uh, upon politics or intrude upon the public space or the public sphere, things like that, or invade it, mm -hmm. um, whether it's politics, society, and the public. So three points just to demonstrate what we're talking about, how secularism is not neutral. So that, that idea that religion can invade or intrude, first of all, it assumes a secular self as a base level upon which religion is chosen or not chosen or is is indispensable it's excuse me it is dispensable it's contingent it's not absolute mm -hmm. okay the relig the, the 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 secular self is the real self the religion is added on top like sprinkles on an ice cream cone right and it's not essential and so this is what can allow us to imagine that religion would intrude encroach invade on something because we don't consider it part of the essential self in the first place. That's one. Two, it assumes a universal social space, which is called society, upon which religion can be plotted and mapped and exists. Right? People did not imagine such a thing as society. This is an anachronism. We talk about how was society in seventh century Mecca? There was no such thing as society. There was the ummah, there was the khalq, the creation. There were all these different other categories through which people not just thought of, but experienced reality. And then society is a category of secularism. Yeah, The social is a category produced by secularism yeah. that has metaphysics behind it that say that that is what is real. And everything else, religious experience, religious institutions, religious beliefs, is something that is not real, that is essentially false consciousness, that is plotted upon that map, the, the real map of social, of societal, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Mm. And then finally, to imagine that religion could intrude or invade defines religion as beliefs, rituals, symbols, and not truth. Yeah. So what, what, what am I most, if I may express a, a complete prejudice here, which is probably uh, totally morally unacceptable, but what, one of my the, the most hated subjects is religious studies, um, as taught, say, in the British, uh, British context anyway. Religious studies, so religion is an object of study. So you think, great, yes. we're going to be looking at metaphysics, theology, truth. No. Wow. And you History, look at sociology. religious studies. That's what it's called. Yes. Oh, it's the rites and rituals of being mm. a Muslim. And uh, what do they do? And when are their holidays? Uh, oh, they're on this date. And yes. you know, it's completely bleached out of any content. And it becomes yes. kind of a sociological descriptive exercise. Yeah. But, but of course, religion isn't about that. It's about worshipping God. It's about, uh, you know, who we are in relation to our creator. And, you know, so for me, religious studies is the very opposite of what um, religion should be about and how it should be spoken of. And that's why I hate it. But that's yes. just me being very horrible. No, fantastic point. Fantastic point. The whole, the whole, all the metaphysical premises that go behind the construction of religious studies as a field uh, are completely materialistic and secular. Yeah. Right. So it, it's it's a definition of religion by default as not true, yeah. by default as false consciousness yeah. to imagine that all religions have these things that are common to all of them, such as symbols and and ritual and, you know, taboos and things like that. That is saying that they're not true. Right. And that is not that is a secular rendering. So there's the power of the secular. Yeah. Again, wielding you yeah. can't talk about truth. You no. can't talk about uh, the divine. Right. These sorts of things. So all of those sorts of things uh, demonstrate the power of secular, of the secular and secularism and how it actually, again, shapes the concepts through which we think and feel and understand everything that's happening. Um, two side points that he makes, but I think they're interesting. He asks the question, is nationalism the new religion? Right. This is something that we hear a lot about. It's like, oh, well, religion is gone, but now the new religion is nationalism. And Esad is very skeptical of those sorts of claims. And he says, why? Because this assumes that secular definition of religion that we just said. To, to understand nationalism as religion assumes that religion is really symbols, taboos, rituals, worship, uh, these sorts of things. Whereas to a religionist, somebody who is a believer, yeah. religion is not religion as such, but it's the truth. Truth and falsehood. Right and wrong. Right? And so to imagine that the nation is, is, is something like a religion, it already presumes this definition and a secular one of what religious truth is. Uh, and then he asks the question, is Islamism simply nationalism? So the idea to um, sort of the Islamic political movements that have gone through the Middle East, North Africa, right, uh, in order to try to get some sort of hybrid between uh, nation state that draws on Islam and, and normative Islamic culture and law, is it simply just nationalism? 
And Assad also says, no, it's not simply nationalism because there are different metaphysics behind it. For the Islamist, uh, the prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is a prophet first and foremost. Mm. Okay, that he is the, the 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 vessel of divine truth and revelation. Whereas for a nationalist, like an Arab nationalist, for example, he talks about Arab nationalism. The prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is simply a statesman, mm. right? a statesman to be to be followed and implemented. Um, for the Islamist, a uh, the 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 repository of of truth is the Hadith. Whereas for the nationalist, it's history, right? And there are different, what's, what's the difference between hadith and history? Metaphysical assumptions, right? The, the hadith are for the believers and history is for the disbelievers, right? If you look at the, and th you'll find this if you go into Islamic studies and somebody like, um, you know, uh, the people you referenced before would, would be well aware of this who are in the field, that the, the privilege that is given to history over hadith mm. within Islamic studies. Whereas to Muslims, History as a genre is very tangential mm. and peripheral compared to hadith, right? We would be much more, uh, and, and rigorous. Hadith is consider, considered much more rigorous of a genre than the history, the, you know, the actual history genre within Islamic scholarship. Um, for the Islamist, there is the ummah. And for the nationalist, there is the nation. What's the difference? The difference is that the ummah does not hold sovereignty. Sovereignty belongs to Allah. Whereas for the nationalists, the, na the nation has sovereignty, and they delegate that sovereignty to the state. To the Islamist, uh, the project is universal in scope. We want everyone to become a Muslim. That's not a secret. We would love it. We're not going to force anybody, but we would love, yeah, sure, that everybody become a Muslim, accept Islam from their own free will. Whereas for the nationalist, um, it's mostly regional. It's about their people. Now, that doesn't mean they're not going to have excursions of domination or resource acquisition outside their boundaries. But it's all about, at the end of the day, whatever their imagined community is. So, in sum, so uh, uh, this is kind of the the summing up the a couple of broad uh, genealogy. So at, at the end, he kind of gives this genealogy, which is what a lot of people I think wanted him to just put in the beginning of the book, <laughs> right? Where does secularism come from? Okay, he says secularism. If you follow the concept throughout history, you know, we're doing a genealogy of this idea of secularism. It began actually as a legal term for the transition of a, of a monk from monastic life to a life of canons, right? A different type of life. That's how it used to be understood. After the Reformation, it changed, and it became used to describe the transfer of ecclesiastical property, the property of the church, similar to the walk system, to laypersons, putting it back on the market, freeing it up. And this happened en masse in England, especially, but also in continental Europe. Henry VIII famously did that. Um, he took a lot of church land and well, he actually gave it to, off to his rich buddies rather than to um, just there you go. regular people in the street, <laughs> regular peasants. It was his uh, the barons and earls of his... Yeah, anyway. Yeah. Right. So that's what secularization actually meant after the Reformation. Once we get to modernity, secularization shifts again and takes on a final meaning, which is the universal ground from which theological discourse is generated and that means that it's false consciousness it's not true because the secular is what's real and mm -hmm. from the secular there are religious people who produce or generate theological ideas right and from which it is gradually emancipated itself so religion is now freeing itself from itself right it's it's becoming more into the uh well let's put it this way hmm. secularism produces the true religion the enlightened religion the tolerant religion the acceptable religion right so religion in again this is secularism in the modern time is freeing itself from its uh we could say barbaric past or its pre-modern past and it's being redeemed by undergoing this change in which it is amenable to state interests, it is quote unquote enlightened and tolerant because it concedes, it concedes the idea that it is not the real, it is not the background, it is not the default, but rather it is something that is superimposed on top of the real, which is society and uh, the social space. So if we take we take ideas from humanism from the Renaissance and the idea of nature from the Enlightenment and the idea of history from Hegel, and that's what leads to this shift of secularism throughout yeah the history. I, I think politically the big change uh, that used to me the earthquake in the world was the french revolution in 1789 which in, in a real way was the birth of political secularism i would argue and the crushing or the attempted 
destruction of the Catholic Church, mm. or at least it's pushing in, into the, the private realm very, very much so the persecution of Catholic priests and nuns on a huge scale. I, th I think, and, and that's the backdrop, I think, to the way the French state treats Muslims. It's not, mm. although there's particular animus against Islam, this is true, but there, there is form. The, 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 mm. the French mm. state has been here before uh, with the Catholic Church, and it's continuing a, a trajectory that has existed since 17. 89 and the war on faith basically that came from uh the revolutionaries of the french republic yes and that, that's another holdover too actually the whole quote-unquote liberating or the transfer of ecclesiastical property to the barons and and whatnot was actually another continuation that happened in the colonial period once the europeans came to muslim lands and they yeah. saw the waqf system They're like oh well this is the same thing uh, so we're going to bust up the waqfs and redistribute it to our buddies uh just like we just finished doing in europe proper um, so the khulasa, or the, the the overall thing, what we've tried to show, and what Esed has tried to show, and we've tried to elaborate upon, is that secularism is not neutral. Secularism is not just a space that is defined by absence, the absence of religion, or the absence of uh, state support for religion. It is a movement and a hegemonic political project that has particular metaphysics, a particular understanding of human being, a particular understanding of what rights are, and a particular imperative to support certain uh, certain formations of government in order to protect those rights, in order to produce a certain acceptable form of religiosity and religion, nay, actually creates the category of religion, whereas before it was known as truth, in order to manage it and to uh, make it adhere to its view of the world. And Allah knows best. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you. Thank you very much indeed um, for that, uh, Tom. Uh, just a couple of things. This is the book um, that uh, Imam Tom has been talking about, Formations of the Secular. Very interesting book indeed. I've got my uh, the bookmarks uh, all the way through.